common modalités de gouvernance. Ok, uh, Christian, first thing, uh, you present yourself and uh, the organization you work with. So, I, I'm a professor of law, public law, and I work for the University uh, Guglielmo Marconi in Rome, and I direct this project that is established at Lewis University, which is called LabGolf, Laboratory for the Governance of the Commons, which is a project uh, that aims at basically uh, foster the role of universities, knowledge institutions to enable the governance of the commons in cities. It was established five years ago and uh, it started by working in you know, Rome, Bologna and, and now it's working in several other Italian cities. It was late, later joined by uh, Fordham University Sheila Foster, who is now co-director of uh, LabGov, and we are going to work in uh, other cities uh, around the world. We are starting two new experimentation grounds in Amsterdam, one in Amsterdam and one in New York. But talking about Italy uh, first, maybe, um, I think the, the, the there is a movement of uh, common charters now in Italy. I've heard that the last uh, the, the last thing I've heard is is 97 cities uh, already have a mm -hmm. common charter, and ev all of this started in Bologna. Could you explain that why Bologna and the history of this of this movement? If we so, I think that in Italy there is a movement around the commons. It's not a movement around, and I, I'm very skeptical about the idea of the regulation on urban commons being copy-pasted, because if there is something new about the commons, it's adaptiveness and diversity in, in the design of governance and regulations and laws and, and rules. And uh, so, it is true instead that in Italy there is a, a, a movement around the commons that has also diverse experiments going on in different cities that are working on different legal tools. So Bologna started this idea of a regulation on the urban commons, but you have Naples that is working on, on a similar issue, but for instance, occupied spaces <coughs> in a, through, different, through a different uh, regulatory solution. You have Messina, now Rome is going to do, uh, is going to find its way to the commons, Milan, and, uh, and I think that the really, it's not more, it's not important the fact that there are 97 cities that are just copy-pasting because it's also a very difficult and sophisticated regulation that needs a lot of um, expertise and if it's the regulation is not accompanied as it is in Bologna by a, an architectural an architect in architecture a project architecture that is working on the city government to to change the way it governs the city and it, uh, by, by, by fostering forms of commons e enabling uh, institutions and, and solutions, then it's, it's, it's really dangerous. If I can say, for instance, that one thing is that I, I, I very much, uh, I very much I think that it's, it's a problem if the regulation is copied in the south of Italy. Because you don't have the same institutional capacity, you don't have the same uh, uh, level of public ethics that is, was you know, given and for granted in Bologna when the regulation was designed. So for, the south, for southern cities, I'm from the south of Italy, you, you need different 
tools. And in fact, Naples is one example. I did something for the city of Batipaia, which is around legality as a commons. And so you need a different, you need maybe the same approach, the same methodology, the same process, but you need to co-design with city inhabitants the governance, the commons governance tool. Otherwise you're just, you know, basically uh, reasoning and uh, using the same rationale that the Leviathan state used to use of boilerplates and top-down kind of structure and, and solutions to the commons which are instead able to, should be able to write their own rules, should be able to find their own uh, governance devices. I'm, uh, I'm happy to hear that, the, the, the idea of no, the copy, <laughs> copy paste thing. Uh, I, I was a little not afraid, but something, uh, the number of, uh, of charters in Italy was for me, wow, that, what, what, what this kind of thing. If we compare uh, um, what's happening in Italy and... Is it about the number or, or about the quality? Exactly. Uh, because I think that uh, the commons, it's about also the, the quality of the, the process that you infrastructure and you need to, you need to constantly safeguard the process and measure how much power is getting distributed in the city. Otherwise, it's not common. So, by just by applying and copy-pasting the regulation, you are not really deciding or establishing whether power is, is being redistributed in the, in the city. So you're just... And some, and I, I fear, that some of these cities are using this regulation and this language for opportunistic reasons, just as a political narrative and just to, to reinvent themselves because the, you know, the policy makers at the local level are not you know, also always the kind of policy makers that you want to have in charge. But if you talk, for example, of uh, Bologna, uh, where this whole movement, uh, let's say, started. Bologna had its own story, as you say, its own contextual background that uh, allowed to have uh, this kind of, um, of charter there. If you compare what's going on in Bologna with, uh, for example, what's going on in Barcelona, how, how, how could you compare this? Yes. So the difference between Bologna and Barcelona, if I can elaborate on that, is that in Bologna, it started in 2011 on the basis of background studies that uh, I and other uh, scholars carried out, developed, on the idea that uh, uh, we should find new ways to, to govern the city, so that uh, we would need to work on uh, the, the city administration, and the city regulations and that and it was a way to also kind of elaborate a new thinking beyond the, the, the classical public private divide it was not a political narrative it was not the basis of a political movement which is you know completely fine but it's the kind of I would say this is the it was a research project to change to understand how institutional change can be brought at the city level and, you know, and to foster commons and to foster the action of local communities and local collectivities. Because as you know, Bologna has always been famous for its social capital. And one of the, one of the, the needs that I, I was told to address at the beginning was that maybe this social capital was waning, was being, you know, was, uh, was at risk of being lost because the government was even too, uh, you know, efficient in some way or because the government was even too present and uh, or because maybe the private sector was taking over some other aspects of the city life that could have been uh, addressed through the action and of the social movements, the social organizations, the local co-ops. 
so that uh, it was a way to also uh, treasure the the presence of uh, the, the social economy and the social entrepreneurs, uh, the cooperative movement. So, um, what we we talked uh, w when we talk about the commons now, we talk about. Uh, at the national level, they talk about the partner states, for example, uh, Estado Socio, but, uh, but also in a, at the municipal level, we could talk about um, partner administration, etc. How do you see that? So, I... Uh, I mean, I what, 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 what the difficulty is, what the, uh, the, the problems you, you see in establishing Oh, all sorts of problems, of course, and uh, I would, I, I very much like the idea of uh, a partner state. If the state, as an apparatus, is a partner of a, another form of state, which is the community, we need to start conceiving the community as a state actor as a public actor. The community that, organize, that organizes itself, the community that gets together and starts delivering social services, communal services, collaborative services, in alliance and in partnership with the state as an apparatus, and not, not as a, a proxy, but as, as a real partner as two public actors that come together to reshape urban democracy, urban economy and, and, and state, and the idea of the state as a form of a, a big alliance between these two forms of, of, of the public. The public as the public administration and the public as the community, then I think that also we, we kind of we are able to, to find and to reframe many, uh, most of the problems that we usually face when uh, we deal with the state reform. And of course, there is always uh, some friction and some resistance to, to, to change in, in every actor, in every society, in every institution. So bureaucracy tend to slow the process sometimes, uh, or uh, pre-existing actors may want to know better because they, they might lose some of their, uh, let's say, rents, some of, they, of their uh, powers in the city. So, it's of course one of the, the, the things that you need to deal with is, uh, is how you convince all the actors within the city to come together and find. And I always think that the best way is to start experimentations. To, to say, let's try. Let's, let's try to see if this works in this city with your peculiarities, with your, you know, if it's a, what is appropriate to your local conditions, as Elin Ostrom would say, and on, on what resource or on what uh, commons we can create governance, we can change the way the, the, way the city is governed. So by, by, by adopting an experimental approach, you, uh, you you create the conditions, the preconditions for people to have less bureaucratic fear, less fear in general to, to lose there, because they understand that this, this can be also a way to improve their normal way of doing business. It's a kind of, uh, a kind of cultural revolution you're proposing there. Um, Yes, definitely, it's a, it's it's a, it's a it's a cultural shift that is needed, and because also experimentation implies the the risk of failures, 
and uh, we need to embrace actually failures uh, as as a form to as a way to address uncertainty. Uncertainty is the main issue that we are facing in a in a, in, a, in an age of transition like this one. And uh, uncertainty, uh, you can only address it by being humble and and d decide that you can try, that you can experiment new solutions, and that you're going to evaluate the results of your experimentation. And on the basis of the, the results, you're going to uh, to design new solutions, but only on the basis and you know, on the once you have measured the impacts of, of the experimentation, you can then start prototyping and modeling new new long term solutions. You've been part and you've been organizing actually uh, conferences like uh, CDR's Commons. Um, but you were part of different of these uh, meetings. There is more and more meetings uh, these days about the cities. Um, uh, I refer to this meeting uh, in in Barcelona with the Pro Commons um, meeting, where a, a series of proposals made to Europe. I think I remember. Uh, do you think that that's the beginning of really? Uh, I would say not a movement, but uh, something that could be really spread uh, out in the different cities. You mentioned Amsterdam and New York, but uh, how do you see this spreading out? So I, so I believe that uh, this is not going to happen through some EU policy or some national policy. I believe as an urban public lawyer and policy expert that uh, this is going to happen through, or at least that I'm, I'm more interested in working on interlocal, intercity cooperation, that uh, you know the approach is more similar to the global parliament of mayors uh, that is going to take place in The Hague. Uh, so in the idea is to, to have cities working together and sharing not the practice but the process and the methodology to start these kind of experimentations. I think that if we want to have diversity as a design principle for pu public policies around the commons, we need to have it, we need to have many cities working on the commons and find each one their own way to the commons and share the methodology to produce public poli local public policies on the commons and then exchange these, these, these protocols, these methodologies and at some point in, in, in some years uh, elaborate uh, a common you know, methodology, a common standard like, like you know, it, it's an approach similar to what, to what is embraced by the open source world, where the knowledge commons are produced, where you have many people, call, many users collaborating, cooperating, but cooperating on the basis of a shared protocol and shared methodology. So we need to conceive cities as, you know, uh, part of this of this network and uh, part of this cooperative network to produce laws from the ground up policies from the ground up not from the top down because that's the only way you can really respect the commons interesting at uh, GSF here this conference do you do you because there is Evidently, different approaches of the, including the social, social economy here, social and solidarity economy. Um, for, for many, I, I, my perception for many is a kind of palliative kind of thing, and for others is really a way of social transformation. As you, you uh, do you think this kind of meetings are um, useful to? advance in, the, in that direction you mentioned? 
These, uh, these convenings are important as the Series of Commons conference that I co-chaired uh, with Sheila Foster in Bologna in 2015 because they, I perceive them as uh, producing knowledge commons. By agglomerating knowledge in one space, in one place, and creating a sort of critical mass of people that work around specific issue to advance specific values, it's always good. If it is designed as such, if it starts to become a sort of, you know, networking and, you know, uh, or lobbying tool, I don't know, you know, it's not, I don't think this is the case, but I have seen many, many, seen many initiatives that uh, started as, you know, a way to, to really produce knowledge by convene and agglomerate experts, practitioners, individuals in one place to study and discuss about one subject. I've seen many such things, many such initiatives transform themselves into sort of, you know, in, in networking and lobbying ventures. And then, then, it, then when it, when this happens, then I think, especially for the commons, is is not good. Especially for the commons, or for something that is society-based, you know, social economy and community-based. So, what what uh, what is the the message you you sent to these people in your different uh, sessions here? So, my 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 suggestion, rather than the message, is is uh, really to to go out there and start experimentation in cities uh, with, by creating a strong alliance between three main actors and then involve all the other uh, actors. And the three main actors of these experimentations are knowledge institutions, universities, schools, cultural centers, practitioners, experts, innovators, social entrepreneur, entrepreneurs at the local level, and the city government and city hall and to 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 do what to run pilot projects around the commons to understand what the entry point for the commons in that city is and to understand what are the guidelines the insights the ingenuity of the specific place that can be used to design then regulatory tools and urban constitutions that are commons based, urban charters that are commons based. Because the, all, the ultimate goal is to re rewrite the social pact, the social contract at the local level, at the urban level, using the values and the design principles of the commons. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank <laughs> you.